uh, today we will complete our talk about the disorders of the salivary glands تكلمنا عن الباروتيد جلاند تكلمنا عن السبماندبولار جلاند now we will talk about the sublingual glands regarding the anatomy of sublingual glands they are paired glands lying on the anterior part of the floor of the mouth it is between the mucous membrane of the uh, of the uh, floor of the mouth mylohyoid muscle and the body of the mandible it is close to the mental symphysis uh, usually the head is drains by numerous excretory ducts which is called ducts of rivenous this is directly into the oral cavity while the tail drains into submandibular duct or directly into the mouth regarding its disorders most uh, most common disorder is called uh, cyst this is specific cyst for the sublingual glands called ranula ran uh, in in latin language mean uh, a frog this ranula it is a mucus extravasation cyst it is characteristically likes a frog belly it's a clinical course usually resolve spontaneously but may require surgery uh, but in this case the surgery uh, carries high uh, morbidity the surgery involve uh, removal of the uh, salivary gland uh, because it, the incision and the drainage carries high recurrence rate uh, other other type of cysts is called a blank ranula this is for, uh, th it is different from uh, uh, ranula in form uh, ranula it is extravasation in mucus cyst while here the blank ranula it is uh, a mucus retention cyst the mucus usually collects below, below the gland and perforates through the myelohyoid muscle in or, uh, and reach to the neck to enter the neck presentation usually soft fluctuant painless double shaped swelling in some mandibular or submental region of the neck usually diagnosed by ultrasound or MRI but sometimes need aspiration in order to differentiate it from the lymphangioma aspirate usually reveals thick yellow etrically fluid treatment usually by surgical uh, uh, surg uh, treatment by surgery but here the surgical approach is contraindicated the surgery involves removal of the of the gland and aspirate of the saliva the sac will will be uh, resolved spontaneously because it's con formed of the connective tissue not epithelium so melt, uh, melts away once this leak of the saliva is removed the tumors of the sublingual glands usually uh, rare but it's malignant in 90 percent of cases presentation as rubbery painless swelling in the uh, floor of the m of the mouth if there is pain and the uh, symptoms of lingual nerve paresthesia this indicates high grade tumor diagnosed usually by biopsy which type of biopsy is punch biopsy treatment involved in a block resection uh, that's say it's white excision involving the uh, overlying mucosa uh, uh, that's say um, removal of the gland with overlying mucosa adjacent periosteum with simultaneous neck dissection and this neck dissection depend on the stage of the malignant tumor uh, it's uh, uh, necessitate immediate reconstruction of the intraoral defect with radial artery forearm free flap or anterolateral thigh flap uh, regarding the, uh, the other type of salivary glands called minor salivary glands they are 800 in number in the oral cavity distributed in the lips cheeks palate floor of the mouth retromolar area upper di area digestive tracts uh, it is contributes to 10 percent of the total salivary gland mass or volume here the cyst is also extravasation cyst it's resembling granule rather retention uh, cyst the over uh, it is a present usually on the lower lip and the floor of the mouth presents as painless but uh, uh, and uh, it is painless uh, cyst uh, translucent, translucent but it is not always translucent, uh, translucent. it is uh, sometimes resolved spontaneously but also sometimes requires surgical excision and its recurrence is rare uh, regarding the tumor 
a tumor of the minor cervical glands they are usually malignant and it's commonly pres uh, found in the palate most common size palate and upper uh, lip and uh, retromolar regions but it's commonly more uh, more commonly in the palate present a well-defined rubbery lump uh, presentation a, a rubbery lump uh, in the salivary glands, minor salivary glands, it uh, it is malignant until proved otherwise. This is uh, this is a rule. Benign uh, lesion present as painless, firm, slowly growing tumor, and if it is the benign lesion, it is less than centimeter. So, uh, it is diagnosed usually by excisional biopsy, and the defect led to uh, heal by secondary intention. While the large region lesion, sorry more than one centimeter diagnosed by punch biopsy if it is a uh, proven uh, benign then we do excision of the whole of the whole lesion the malignant lesion usually uh, mostly it is low grade and it is uh, similar to that of the uh, benign lumps firm the overlying mucosa may be pink blue or black but in high grade lesion it is the the lamp usually necrotic and ulcerate in later presentation how can we treat it low grade uh, tumor in the palate wide local excision and the defect let help to uh, heal by the secondary intention while the lesions that perforate the palate this require partial or total maxillectomy the defect managed by a prosthetic operation or immediate uh, reconstruction. The minor salivary glands who are necrotizing cyanometaplasia, which is one of the differential diagnoses of malignant tumor of minor salivary glands. Uh, it is a rare condition, typically occurs in the palate and mimic aggra an aggressive tumor. Presentation deep punch out ulcer with indurated, uh, indurated margin it is cannot be distinguished from neoplastic lesion just by biopsy diagnosis suggested there is rapid onset a growing lesion but it is in young uh, person this uh, lesion does not require treatment it is uh, resolved spontaneously and just require require symptomatic treatment uh this this is was the last topic regarding to the minor salivary glands and to the disorder of salivary glands in general